It's branching exile. In Path of Exile 3.24, Necropolis League, Blight farming in maps is probably more rewarding than it ever has been in the past few leagues. Well, maybe even ever, except maybe for the time where you could have multiple Blights on a map, but that is a different story. But yesterday, uh, P uh, GTG re announced the new Blight Scarabs uh, for the next league, and they are looking pretty, pretty interesting. So let's take a look at that. Um, Light overall is just a very, very solid strategy to earn currency all throughout the league. It doesn't matter if it's in the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the league. Light oils are always in pretty high demand. Usually, as soon as I put oils in my stash, they sell within just a few minutes of just continuing farming. And yeah, just overall a very good source of currency. Um, but let's have a look at the scarabs that they have announced. And the first one is pretty straightforward. It is basically just a scarab that adds a blight encounter um yeah pretty basic we know that as the rusted rusted blight scarab from the previous leagues um we are probably not going to use it since it's very easy to get the blight encounter chance on the atlas you just need four points in this wheel and you already get 76 percent chance and then you go down here grab these two nodes and you get another 24 percent chance and voila you're already at 100 chance to get a blight encounter so very easy and since you're already going into the left side of the tree you're probably coming by those anyway the next scarab however is a little bit more interesting it is the blight scarab of bounty blight chests in area have a 20 percent chance to be open a bit again which is really really strong and it also has a limit of two so you can well stack that up and get a 40 percent chance um, to open those blight chests another time I'm pretty sure you can only reopen a blight chest once. It would be kind of insane if that could be done potentially infinite times, um, but that would also be statistically unlikely. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, only possible to reopen a chest once, which is already pretty good because on average that would bring you like 40% more loot in theory. So something like that. That is pretty, pretty insane. Uh, all those oils that you drop, all those maps that you drop, 40% more, I'll take it. And this scarab also pairs incredibly well with another set of as passives here on the tree. And, and that is the left wheel here. You just grab Epidermology. I hope that I pronounced that right. I always messed it up, but that's fine. Uh, and you basically get a chance for some... Um, not just a chance, you get a three lucky chests uh, in your maps just from this node then you get two more lucky chests from the two back nodes here which are now being shifted over a little bit uh, since the bottom three nodes here are completely removed and then this also gives you 80 percent more chance to contain blighted maps which is really nice for farming up those and then also having just uh, a higher chance for an additional reward on those lanes is also really really nice and should pair up very nicely with the um, reward scarab uh, the blight scarab of bounty the next one is also kind of like an old friend it's the blight scarab of oils blight oils found in area are one tier higher which is really really good and we already know that from the sextant from the previous leagues um, but the sextant had like a little bit of a downside of doubling your tower cost which was pretty bad but manageable but kind of bad and now we only get the upside of that section it's only the higher oil tiers no downside no additional cost this one is a really really good scarab and it pairs incredibly well with the next set of blight nodes all the way up here blight spawn oils found in your maps have a 25 percent 25 percent chance to be one tier higher so theoretically, all those opalescent oils that drop that would normally drop in your map can now be a golden oil, or they're guaranteed to be a silver oil and also have a chance to go up to a uh, to a golden oil. So that is really really nice, uh, really good source of those high high tier oils. And just in general, this wheel is also pretty good because it also gives you the extractors, which are really valuable, and then you also get. Uh, just an increased chance to contain blight maps and oils, which again is just really really nice to have when you're farming blight. And then the last scarab is kind of interesting and spicy. 
It is the Blight Scarab of Blooming. Blight encounters in area have up to three additional unique bosses, which is already interesting. The previous Scarabs only gave us one additional boss. And unique enemies and blind encounters have a 100% increased life. Bit of a downside, but then again, we're building a bunch of towers that are doing the, the heavy lifting for us, and then we're just standing there and orchestrating, so yeah, it should be, should be fine. But we definitely have to see that. Uh, and then there is the nice line, tier 14 plus blighted maps found in area drop as blight ravaged maps instead. And that is kind of insane. Because when you normally farm blight, you do that on tight layouts so that all those blight lanes are condensed into ideally just one lane with a bunch of chests at the end. And blight encounters are guaranteed to have one lane with blight rewards. So if you can condense those lanes into just one, you get just six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven chests in the end. It is really, really good. And all those chests are dropping you a ton of oils and most likely also a ton of blighted maps. 10, 15, 20 blighted maps, absolutely possible. Sadly, we don't have the map duplication anymore on the Atlas. Uh, I think there's a scarab for it. Let me just check. Uh, more maps, map side here. Ah, okay. It's, of course, the most expensive scarab. Uh, so maybe don't use that one necessarily, but even without the duplication, you get a ton of uh, blighted maps from, yeah, just farming encounters in something like Toxic Sewer, Space Pool, Carcass, all those nice tight layouts. And now all those blighted maps, if they are tier 14 or higher, they're going to do drop as blighted ravage maps, which normally you would only get if you're running T13 or higher blighted maps. Um, so in theory we should end up with a lot more blighted ravage maps, which I don't know, we have to see if the price on those comes down a lot or if it's kind of staying constant. Uh, I think the, the whole economy is going to be shaken up by a lot of the new additions and possibilities we have in the endgame here now. So let's see how that plays out. Um, but this Scarab also plays really well with another wheel of Atlas passives. Remember we get three additional bosses from just just that scarab and if we then go into distilled fungus here we have one additional boss so four in total now uh, instead of the previously two so we already doubled and also blight bosses in your map drop an additional anointed jewelry item and jewelry items are really really nice because they can give you a ton of silver and gold noise again the only problem is uh in the past few leagues, I always had more anointed jewelry where I wanted to extract oils from than I had extractors. Um, so you would have to buy them from the market. And this kind of means with more bosses now, more anointed jewelry, but the same amount of extractors, they are probably going to go up in price a bit. Um, definitely have to see how much that is. But that also means that whenever you don't have that boss scarab, you can just stock up the... Uh, the extractors that you farm in the other encounters so maybe it also balances itself out in some form and to make your life a lot easier with those anointed items um, you can use item filters um, filter blade for example has some settings for that so if you just open up your filter go under, under customize then you scroll all the way down to end game special rares and crafting level 68 plus then you go under League specific items and mods and then under special properties there is a blight anointed items and here you can make some settings i think by default it should look something like this uh, which would already highlight you all the anointed items with like um, some special colors and what i usually do is i disable the rings so only the amulets would be highlighted but then there are some additional rules for anointed rings that have a silver or golden oil and then you can just enable those and then only rings with silver or golden oil will be highlighted and every anointed uh, amulet will be highlighted the amulets then you have to go through manually to find out what oils are on there but it's still kind of doable if you just go in to path of exile again and with awaken poe trade installed you can just hit the keybind when you hover over one of those anointed jewelry items and then you can see that this amulet for example has two crimson oils and a sepia oil uh, not really worth extracting so you would just 
either vendor that uh, that amulet or just destroy it depending on if you want those fragments or not. So what is the blight strategy that I'm going to run for well, probably most of the league? Um, yeah, pretty much that what we talked about. In addition to those mentioned classes, I'm also going to take the sturdy construction wheel to just get more health on the pump and also some increased damage. Because let's be honest, there are way too many monsters that completely ignore your towers and cannot be slowed and just rush straight through and then you have a bad time. And that's not great, not fun at all. Um, so some extra health is going to be nice. And then obviously you also want the two nodes on the back here for reduced cost of building and upgrades, um, which is really, really helpful. And basically with those 40% reduction, you can just spam the towers and they do the job for you. And depending on like how your build feels and uh, how comfortable you are, you can also take immune response and the two nodes here that give you just a lot more monsters and also make your make the monsters spawn faster. So you kind of speed up the whole progress. Um, but you might need a higher damage build for that. Definitely be careful with that one. Try that out. Um, it also might kill you quickly because blight monsters are savage. And then in terms of these scarabs, obviously I'm going to use the blight scarab of oils to get that higher tier. That one is just really, really solid. Uh, can't go without it. I think I would aim for two blight scarab of bounties here to get that 40% chance increase. Um, really really nice at least on paper i think it should be nice and then ideally if it's not too expensive and not too crazy then uh, this blight scrap of blooming is going to be really really good and uh, give you also a ton of blight ravage maps i wonder how expensive that thing would need to be to be not worth it or how inexpensive blight ravage maps would need to be to not make sense to take this scarab because you get so many of them, I, this one is probably paying for itself. Unless prices are just completely all over the place. Who knows? Who knows what is going to happen on Friday on League Start. Uh, I know for sure that I'm going to stream the League Start, obviously. And if you don't want to miss that, if you just want to hang out, chat a little bit, just chill with some piano tunes, then you can just come over here on YouTube or on Twitch. I'm going to stream on both platforms. And yeah, then we are just going to have a good time. I hope I see you guys there. Until then, have a good time. Take care. Bye. Well done. Now be a good assistant and find a place to deploy a tower.